Hare Krishna, dear devotees, today we'd like to seek the blessings of Radha Shyamsundar, Radha Madhav, Krishna Balaram, Gonitai, Shila Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj, and the assembled devotees. Now, today is a very special day. It's the appearance day of Lord Balaram, and Lord Balaram is here. There he is. There. Yeah. Krishna's brother, that's yeah. right. Older brother. So, um, very special day, and this is a really amazing verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Ete chamsa kala pumsa Krishna stu bhagwan swayam indrari vyak pulam lukam vrityanti yuge yuge. All of the above mentioned incarnations are either plenary portions of portions of or portions of plenary portions of. But Lord Sri Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. Krishna Astu Bhagwan Swayam. This is a really nice line uh, to remember. Very easy. Krishna Astu Bhagwan Swayam. Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. All of them appear on planets whenever there is a disturbance created by the atheists. The Lord incarnates to protect the theists. So, Krishna is the original and his first incarnation, Vaibha Prakash, is Balaram. He's exactly the same as Krishna, except he's got different color. Krishna is Shyam, like a darkish, bluish, blackish color. And Balaram is white, very beautiful. Sometimes Krishna is regarded as the eighth avatar, right? When you say, Mach, Kach, Vara, Nasing, Vaman, Pushram. Uh, Ram, and then sometimes people say Krishna, but actually it's Balaram, because Krishna is Avatari, he is the origin of all the avatars. However, the review scriptures explain that Krishna is the fountainhead of the avatars, is known as Avatari, 1328 of the Bhagavad Gita. Balaram is actually the eighth avatar, and also he is the first expansion known as Prakashwe Bhav. Same as Godhead as Krishna, except for his color, which is white, and his mood, which is to please and serve Krishna. So he's God, but he's servitor God. Lord Balaram created the spiritual world, which consists of the planet Golok Bindavan and Vaikuntha. So this is from the Maitya Lila of Chaitanya Chaitamut. He expands himself into Lord Maha Sankarsan and through further different expansions creates the material world. So this is a very nice family tree of Krishna. So Krishna at the top and then Balaram, and then we have the quadruple expansion, the Narayan, second quadruple expansion. And then we have the three Vishnus who are the creative potency of the Lord. Lord Balaram also expands into the great serpent known as Ananta or Sheshnag. He lays on the casual ocean and serves as a as a couch upon whom Lord Mahavishnu reclines. <laughs> yeah, Mahavi, this is the snake, Anantashesh. That Anantashesh is a devotee incarnate of God who knows nothing but service to Krishna. With his thousands of mouths, he always sings the endless glories of Lord Krishna since time immemorial and still has not found an end to his glories. He also expands himself to serve as Lord Krishna's paraphernalia, including such items as umbrella, slippers, bedding, pillows, garments, everything is an expansion of Balaram, and that is to please Krishna. Lord Balaram exemplifies a service attitude to Krishna. His only mission is to please Krishna by rendering service to him. Balaram is the eternal companion of Krishna. He came previously as Lakshman. So when Ram came, Lakshman came. When Krishna comes, Balaram comes. And then when Chaitanya comes, Nityananda comes. He is the original spiritual master. And anyone desiring to make spiritual progress must first get the mercy of Lord Balaram. So Lakshmiji and your family, because you've come to serve Lord Balaram on Balaram Jayanti, you're very, very fortunate. You, he's the original guru. If you please him, you will automatically please Krishna. Well done. 
Whenever Krishna appears in the material world, he is accompanied by his associates and paraphernalia. Over 5,000 years ago, when Krishna descended onto the, into the material world, he was first presided by Balaram. Only after Balaram gave his mercy to this world did Krishna descend. Such is the intimate relationship between Krishna and Balaram. When Balaram appeared on the, as a seventh child in the womb of Devaki, she could understand that there was a divine child and this made her all more concerned about his safety. Even Kams could sense his potency and he became fearful, thinking he may have been tricked by the prophecy that he will be slain only by the eighth child of Devaki. At that time, Krishna instructed Yogamaya, his internal potency to transfer the unborn child from the womb of Devaki to that of Rohini, one of the other wives of Vasudev. Did you know that? Balaram, he was transferred from the womb of Devaki yeah. to the womb of Rohini. Wait, wait, there, wait, there are multiple wives? Wait. One of the other wives of Vasudev. Wait, what? I did that thing in Boston. Who was hiding from Kams in the house of Nandmara in Gokul. In this way, Balaram was born in gold who, under the protection of Nanbaraj. Garga Muni, the venerable, uh, sorry, venerable <laughs> Kulguru, family priest of the Yadu dynasty, uh, reveals to Rohini that the child he was carrying was indeed that, the son of her husband, Vasudev. Uh, yes, Prabhupada? You're muted, I think. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. <clears throat> I have to ask this because <clears throat> I didn't know about this. As you said that um, the, the baby was in uh, uh, was moved to Rohini. So yes. see, see the baby was in uh, sorry what was the name? Uh, Devaki's womb. De yeah Devaki's uh, womb and oh. It was moved to Rohini's. Uh, yeah. And then the Balram was born. Is that right? Yes. From uh, Rohini's womb, he, he, he appeared. Yeah. Oh, all That's right. Crazy. Because I always thought that even he was born with the Deviki, but as you ah, said no. just now. That's correct. He was moved. Uh, because he was very attracted to Rohini. Rohini. Rohini is his eternal mother. So Rohini was in the house of Nand and Balaram went to her and became her son. That's correct. Oh, all yes. right. Thank yes. you. Very good. Thank you for asking. No, so I got is, it now. Thank you very much. This is the name giving ceremony. This is Nand Maharaj. This is yeah. Agamuni. This is Krishna. Right. They're, they're giving him the name. And there's Balaram. Mm. Well, Ram, there, yeah, I can see. Uh, the very nice, thank you. Ceremony. He named the child Ram, who gives all pleasure. Ram means one who gives pleasure. Referring to the intense, immense strength of the child, Garga Muni predicted that he will also be known as Balaram. So we know uh, he's more famously known as Balaram. Bal means strength. Since he was forcibly attracted from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini. He's also called Sankarsan or Rohini Nandan. And as the elder brother of Krishna is also known as Dauji. Both brothers are exquisitely beautiful with black hair like the cluster of crow's feathers and eyes like lotus petals. The only difference between them is the color. Krishna is bluish black, like a thunder cloud and Balaram was cotton wool white. So there you go. This Krishna has got this amazing color. And this is Balaram. Lord Balaram's beauty is enhanced by the earrings touching his cheeks. His face is decorated with tilak mark made from musk. His broad chest is uh, garlanded with fragrant forest flowers. Balaram's voice is very grave and his arms are very long. The splendor of Lord Balaram's transcendental form eclipses many millions of glistening rising moons. Balaram is Lord Krishna's dearest friend. 
although he knows the supernatural power of his younger brother Krishna, still out of love for him, he never leaves Krishna alone in the forest, even for a moment. Balaram did not make any sound after his appearance, which was on Purnima today, in the month of Shravan, and yes, eight days before Krishna's appearance. So he waited until he saw Krishna before he even made a sound. So this is a very nice painting of Balaram, what he looks like, whitish. He's got blue garments, very strong, very handsome, very beautiful. And uh, this is Krishna in Balaram. Krishna always dresses in yellow, sporting a flute. And Balaram wears blue, and he's always got a plow with him. You can see the plow is there. There's the plow there. There's a plow. Plow is like what you dig the uh, ground with. Mm -hmm. And they had many uh, childhood pastimes together, especially with Gomata. You can see here Krishna would grab all of the tail of the cow and be dragged on Brajit dust. And Balaram would be always with him, enjoying the pastimes. They would always be together, enjoying, playing. And then they would also do their makanchor uh, pastimes, the, stealing the butter. Yeah, they would do it together. Curd, yeah, yeah, that's right. Eternally, Balaram always looks like a 16-year-old boy. <laughs> his handsome hair is tied into a graceful top knot. Splendid earrings adorn his ears, and his neck is splendidly decorated with uh, garlands of flowers and strings of jewels. Splendid armlets and bracelets, ornament daujis, graceful and very strong arms, and his feet are decorated with splendid jeweled anklets. During their childhood, Krishna and Balaram kept their mothers busy in transcendental anxiety by crawling everywhere. When they were walking, they were involved in transcendental pranks. <laughs> Balaram would assist Krishna in his delightful naughty pastimes. To increase the pleasure of Krishna's Vatsalya Ras, one time Balaram informed Ishoda, Krishna has been eating dirt. Very good, yeah. Go and say that. Say that. And so when he, so when you saw the checked, there was literally the whole universe in his mouth. <laughs> planets, maybe even the two planets. Well done. This is Brittany. Very nice, Brittany. Well done. So actually, the neighborhood ladies used to always complain about Krishna, right? Stealing, Stealing the butter. Mm -hmm. But this time. Balaram complained and Yashoda Mai said, hey, how come your brother is complaining? And Krishna, right, he, he didn't want to open his mouth because if he opened his mouth, his mother would see. So he was trying, he was talking to his mother with his mouth closed, trying to swallow the dirt. And he was talking to her and he said, this brother of mine is bad news. And Yashoda Mai said, what do you mean? He always, and this is he's talking with his mouth closed, right? He's always teasing me. You know what he said to me one time? He said to me, How come I am white, your mother is white, Nandamara, your father is white, but you're black? Not really black, but blue. 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 Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so Krishna said, I don't know. Racist. But Ram said, I know. I'm wiser than you. He's eight days older, right? <laughs> he said, one day, your father was walking in the market and he saw somebody auctioning you. <laughs> Talk about sending rivalry. <laughs> and he felt sorry for you. He bought you from the marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> so Krishna started crying. What do you mean? He bought me. Oh, I belong to Mother Yashoda in Nanmar. So like this, he was complaining about, um, uh, he was complaining <laughs> about Balaram. And in the meantime, he's swallowing the dirt. And then she opened his mouth and she saw the universe, like you said. Yes, sir, Kaushalya Maji. Yeah, Prabhuji, how old is uh, Balaram? Balaram must be one year el elder than him, no, Krishna? Uh, actually, he's only eight days. <laughs> is it? Yeah. As far as I understand, he's only eight days. But I might be wrong on that. But uh, as far as I understand, he's only eight days older. Okay. Yeah. 
I think it was eight days. Yeah? So Devki had after eight days Krishna? I think so. I might be wrong on that. Let me just check. Uh, I had it written here somewhere, right? Yeah, see, eight days before Krishna's appearance. I might be wrong on that. Might be eight months. Yeah, might be eight months. We'll check on that. We'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Uh, does anybody know actually on the on the call? Karuna? Not sure, Prabhuji. Okay. Actually, that comes, uh, comes every child. I think Balaram is the eighth child. Eighth child. No, He's the seventh, isn't he? Yeah, and then eighth, yeah, yeah. seventh was Balaram. Seven. Yeah. Then one child, other child, it should be. Was it the sixth? I, I never remember the this. The yeah. Because the this, it shows. was Balaram who came, transferred to Rohini. Yeah, after that. And then after that, answer. straight after that, Krishna came? No, because then. No, uh, yeah, Krishna came straight after that. So seventh child was uh, Balaram, and then eighth child was Krishna. So in Braj, Balaram killed only two demons. Like Krishna killed many, but Balaram killed two. Tenukasura, who was a powerful demon. Who horse. had, uh, yeah, that's right, the donkey, who had assumed the form of an ass. <laughs> 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 With his demon friends, he was donkey. occupied <laughs> Talavad, one of the 12 forests of Vrindavan. Out of fear of these demons, no one would approach Talavan and enjoy the numerous fruits and flowers, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, flowers and fruits yeah, in the forest. Balaram, induced by his cowherd friends, entered the forest, designed to kill the demons. He began shaking the fruit trees, making a big noise. Denuka, like a uh, big uh, man who disguised him with that fire thing. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, I see that um, big devil who just turns small and pretends like, you know, that's different. Yeah, it's different. Denuka, furious at the intrusion, attacked. Balaram with his real legs, but Balaram easily picked him up by his legs and whirled him around until he died. As the other demon friends of Denuka rushed to attack, Krishna and Balaram picked them up and threw them on trees, killing them. Soon the forest was free of all the demons and it appeared that the bent trees were being directed by Balaram to pay obeisances to Krishna. So then all these fruits came out of the tree and they had a very nice lunch. And then there was another demon who came disguised as a cowherd boy. Yeah, like the, the tug of war. Tug of war, that's right. And then they were doing a piggyback. His yeah, name was Palambasura. In Palambasura, that's right. They tried to kidnap Balaram. And then, of course, Balaram grabbed all of him and gave him a good thumping. Yeah. Once when Krishna and Balaram were in, playing with the cowherd boys, a name, a demon name, Palambasura, entered their midst, disguised as a cowherd boy. Understanding the invincible potency of Krishna, he instead decided to abduct Balaram. At the end of the game, as a losing party, he was supposed to carry Balaram on his shoulders. Carrying the Lord on his shoulders, he ran swiftly. But Balaram, realizing the true identity of the demon, began to make himself heavier and heavier, unable to bear the weight. The demon assumed his original form, which was like a huge, dark, effulgent cloud decorated with golden ornaments. Balaram then brought his fist down on the head of the demon, splitting into two and causing him to give up his life. When Balaram would get tired by playing, he would lie down on the lap of one of the boyfriends, cowboy, cow friend, cowherd boys, and Krishna would personally massage his feet, fan him, give him service. Such was a sweet reciprocation between Krishna and Balaram. As the elder brother of Bal Krishna, Balaram was the object of his love and of respect. Once when walking in the forest of Vrindavan, Krishna observed the trees bending down as if paying obeisances. He glorified the lotus feet of Balaram as being the object of devotion, even for the devatas. He said that the trees which were impersonalists in previous lifetimes, witnessing the personal form of Balaram were now pay praying for his devotion. Other things that happened, once Krishna, Balaram, he decided to pretend that he was Krishna. So he wore a peacock feather and he started playing the flute. And then a demon called Keshi came and gave him a kick 
<laughs> and Balaram went back to Krishna and said, here's your peacock feather, here's your flute, you keep it. <laughs> I don't want to be you anymore. Also, I, it was like one of his other feathers. No, it was when the demon came. As well, yeah, probably. Balaram also was not aware that Krishna had expanded himself into all the cowherd, the Gopa boys and calves, uh, until he saw an, this very unusual event in Braj, where everybody was so attracted to their parents, and the parents were so attracted to the child, child and the cows were very attracted to the calves. <laughs> And Balaram was thinking, what's going on here? How come there's so much love going on? And then Krishna said, actually, I've expanded myself. Brahma has kidnapped all the coward boys in the cops. I've expanded myself. And Balaram controls the lotus flower by which travel takes place in Braj, sometimes short and sometimes long distances. So sometimes we see the distances in Braj Dham are very, uh, you know, they, the villages are miles away from each other. But there's a lotus flower which opens and closes, which makes travel in the bridge Bhumi very easy. This is the picture of Krishna expanding himself. That's why I saw that. It's all the cool parts. Once Lord Balaram, who was at the time living in Dwarka, came back to Vrindavan for two months to relieve the bridge bases who were feeling great separation from Krishna. This time he enjoyed pastimes with his gopi friends who are different from the gopis of Krishna. Enjoying such pastimes on the bank of the Yamuna at Ramakka, the Lord summoned Yamuna so that she could sport in the water when Yamuna Devi did not respond because Balaram had been having some nice juices. So she was thinking, is a little intoxicated. <laughs> Balaram took up his favorite weapon, his plow, and began to drag Yamuna in a hundred streams. Understanding the position of Balaram, Yamuna personally appeared and offered her obeisances to the Lord with many prayers in his glorification. Thus appeased, the Lord entered the, and bathed in the waters of Yamuna. Are you going? Yeah. yeah. Are you all going? No. Ah, okay. Hare Krishna. See you. Pitni. Samba, the darling son of Jambavati and Krishna kidnapped Lakshman, Lakshmana, the daughter of Duryodhan from the assembly where she was supposed to choose her brother, her husband. The furious Kauravs, after a prolonged fight, finally arrested Samba by sending six of their greatest warriors. Samba? Samba was the son of Krishna, oh. one of his uh, main child children. And he married, or he kidnapped Lakshmana, the daughter of Duryodhan. So then the Yadavs, they went to Kurukshetra and um, in the battlefield, the holy battle. Mm, oh, not Kurukshetra, sorry, um, Hastinapur. Hastinapur. Mm. And there, they, the Kauravs, they actually ignored Balaram. And Balaram took his mm. plow and he dragged the whole city into the Ganga. He's really powerful. So then they immediately came to him and said, sorry, we were wrong. And Balaram forgave them. And then later on in Satya Yuga, there was a king called Revata, whose daughter Revati was very expert. Now this king couldn't find a husband for Revati. So he went to Lord Brahma and he asked for advice. And Brahma's a moment in Brahma's time is hundreds and thousands of years here. So Brahma said, well, why you been here? <laughs> it's already Dwapa Yug. You go back and your daughter can marry Balaram, who's very qualified. So then they went back and they approached Balaram. And of course, Revati was very big <clears throat> because she was in Sati Yug. Mm. So Balaram then used his plow and shrunk her down to his size. <laughs> and they married. <clears throat> How could she like the, the size? Huge, huge. 10 times bigger. Mm -hmm. Balaram was equally affectionate to both Pandavas and Kauravs. He accepted both Duryodhan and Bhima as his disciple in the art of mace work, uh, the uh, Gadayud. As a teacher, he appreciated the superior technique of Duryodhan as opposed to the raw strength of Bhima. He often took the side of Duryodhan, adding to the 
the ras of persuasion and thrill enjoyed by Krishna. So sometimes he would take the side of the bad guy yeah. and Krishna would enjoy persuading Balaram that you're wrong. <laughs> Don't take the side of the Duryodhana. And at the time of the Mahabharata battle, he refused to take sides. Balaram instead went on an extended pilgrimage to all the holy places. At the end though, he came when there was a fight between Bhim and Duryodhana and yeah. Bhim was hitting the thighs of Duryodhana, which was against the rules of uh, Gadar youth, you know? And Balaram became angry. And Krishna said, well, it's too late to become angry now. Where were you when we were fighting the battle? You were on a pilgrimage, but now you come at the end and you think you can influence the war. And where were you when I... Draupadi was being insulted and Bhim was taking these vows to destroy the thighs of Duryodhana? So then Balaram understood, Yes, this is not the right time to take the side of Duryodhana. <laughs> mm -hmm. Towards the end of Dwapa Yu, thousands of sages assembled on, assembled on the banks of Naimishwarini to perform a thousand year yakya in an effort to stop the onslaught of Kali Yu. One of the main disciples of Vyastev, Ramaharshana, was appointed as his leader. And when Balaram entered that arena, Ramaharshana was a little proud. He didn't rise to meet Balaram. And Balaram noticed this arrogance and with a, a blade of grass, just touching him with a blade of grass, he took the life of Ramahasana. <laughs> this is the stage in uh, this uh, wonderful place that they gathered, um, Nemi Sharanya. And then the sages said to Balaram, what have you done? You've killed our <laughs> speaker. So then Balaram made the son of Ramahanshara as the Ramahashana, as the main speaker. Sutta, Sukadev Goswami. No, no, Sutta Goswami, Sutta Goswami. You're going, just one second, I'm nearly finished. Yes, one second. Actually, yeah. And Balarami is amazing because he actually expands himself in all the different rasas. Santaras as the dham, Dasiras is massaging Krishna, Sakiras is like a friend of Krishna, Vatsalira is like protector of Krishna, and Maduriras he's always so expands as Anandanga Manjari, who is like the sister of Radharani to enhance the pastimes. So that's it. Uh, this is the pastime of Lord Balaram. It's a wonderful occasion of Balaram Jayanti. And I'm so privileged to be here with uh, in the in the temple just to give you a very quick glance. This is uh, what the altar looks like. And today we're going to have our first satsang. So we're just gearing up for it. Okay, we want to stop there. Balaram Jayanti Kija. Any questions? Any comments? Okay, we can stop. Balaram, Lord Balaram Kijay, Krishna Balaram Kijay.